when we do this before and years before, we've had really good attendance and some old faculty and some young faculty. And so uh, it's good to see you all. Uh, what I propose that we do, what we're planning on doing, is having each one of our interns, there are six of them, um, present their material that they've been working on for a whole term. Um, we have, uh, this is the fifth semester uh, that we've been working on the 50th anniversary project. Um, and each term we choose, Tom chooses and I help uh, choose about six students. Uh, many of them seniors, uh, as we have this year. Um, four of our uh, students uh, this year will be graduating. And uh, three, I understand, are going to grad school. So this is a premier group. And they all have different uh, things that they're working on, as you'll see in a second or a minute. Uh, I want to stress this idea of teamwork. Uh, it's, it's proven to be the heart of what we do. Um, Tom has worked hard to be on the campus to meet with them and to, you know, get them started. And uh, he's suggested to me today that as a matter of fact, it's worked really well. And that they um, uh, have formed a team, they've matched their skills and pushed each other uh, to learn new skills. They all work in different areas of the university. And so we're really proud of, of what they're doing and how they're doing it. That's number one. Uh, they've formed very strong uh, uh, connections. They consult each other and they solve problems together. And that's a, a skill that, by the way, these days is something that you'd put on a CV. Um, uh, one, two, two last things. One of our main tasks in this 50th anniversary activity is uh, providing material for the archives. Um, the archives at Stockton have had mixed uh, history. Most people at the Stockton, particularly among older faculty, uh, have never been in the archives and probably couldn't find it if we asked them to. <laughs> Um, and that's a shame because it's a very important part of who we are and uh, we, co we collect information and always have a, a sort of second view of it. You know, is this something that could be in the archive with Heather Perez, who's the archivist, the main archivist, uh, would she like this, et cetera. So uh, that's, so every, anything that you see tonight will end up in the archive. Finally, we have focused this project for now five terms on Stockton stories. That's our term. Um, we, Tom and I spent a considerable amount of time and writing back and forth when we were asked to do this uh, about what the material that we'd be looking for um, and we finally settled on this. One can't, of course, uh, uh, accurately describe in great detail 50 years of a university. It's just impossible. But one can give a, a sense of what we are and where we've been and where we'd like to go uh, from our stories. And that term is deliberately left broad uh, we're not defining it in any way at all. We're simply saying, uh, let's look for Stockton stories. So our students, those that you're going to hear tonight, will be telling their work, their Stockton stories, that is the stories that they've worked on. Sometimes multiple, sometimes single, but they've all been working on Stockton stories. So with that, uh, and you'll get a chance to ask questions of these young folks at the end. Uh, I now turn it over to Tom and he'll 
uh, tell us who's going to go first. The uh, first editing, and thank you, Ken. The first uh, 50th anniversary strike team member uh, that I'll introduce is Brendan Honick, who's leaving us in a few days um, when he graduates. Um, Brendan? Thank you, Dr. Kinsella. Um, if you could just enable screen sharing for me, Dr. K. Good thinking. Hold that thought. Uh, go ahead. Uh, great. There you go. Thank you. I've got a helper. Okay. So good evening, everyone. My name is Brendan Honick, and for the last two semesters, I've been the web design and development intern for Stockton Stories, the 50th anniversary project. As part of my duties, uh, I translate the content that my fellow interns have made, ranging from video documentaries to uh, articles for the site and put them on the website itself. So on this page, you can see our home screen where we consistently and constantly update with new stories. For the site, we've divided our efforts into two main themes. One is places, which talks about the various locations that have defined the university, and people, which involve those individuals that have made a great contribution to Stockton University. As for my own stories that I've contributed to the site, one of them includes the President's Cabin Fire. This event was a 1973 arson that took place during a time of great turmoil at Stockton University. There were campus protests about uh, the firing of seven faculty members that year, and faculty, staff, and students all conflicted with the administration. So with the archives at Stockton, I was able to find information about this event and even take photographs of some of the charred materials that uh, were salvaged from the wreckage. Furthermore, for this site, I've also, with the help of university relations and marketing, uh, created an interactive timeline so that any user on the site can look at our various stories in the context of Stock University's history. On a final note, I've also had the pleasure of moderating Stockton Stories Instagram page, where we update it with photos of the university's past, ranging from dorm rooms in the 80s and 90s to the construction of the Arts and Sciences Building and other memorable locations on Stockton's campus. I've had a really great time working with Dr. Kinsella, Dr. Tompkins, University Relations and Marketing, and my fellow interns these last two semesters, and I look forward to our 100th anniversary in 50 years. <laughs> Back to you, Dr. Kinsella. All right. Uh, Brendan, I, I think you got a very good chance of making that 100th. Um, <laughs> my chance is a little bit less than yours. Uh, we're going to move on to Jess Chamberlain. Hi, everyone. How are you? I know you're not uh, going to answer because you're all muted, but I hope you're all doing well. Um, so let me just share my screen really quick like Brendan just did. Is it good? Can you guys see? It's working. Yes, you can. Awesome. Okay, so hi, I'm Jessica Chamberlain. Um, I have been an intern for the past two semesters. Last semester, I was the archivist, and this semester, I was the freelance writer and coordinator. I worked with um, our other freelancers, Lori and Gabby. Um, we edited each other's pieces. We worked a lot very closely together. It was a great experience, and I learned a lot more about myself than I thought I would um, being an intern. One of the biggest projects I did was the art room last semester, and we had an artist, um, Ashley Collins, and she was wonderful. Here's some of her pieces on the right side. Um, and she informed us about her community that she was a part of in the art building. It was a room upstairs, and I sat in there for a couple of weeks on and off, and I just studied them interacting with each other. Some of the students lived there. Some of the students um, had a toothbrush by the sink. Um, it was so much more than just an art room for them. It was a community that was inside of Stockton's bigger community. And it was so important for me to capture that. And I was really happy that I got to work alongside Ashley with that. And one of our other interns, CJ, also did a video um, pictured here on the right about the art room. So you can also check that out on the Stockton Stories page. But this semester I worked on something very near and dear to my heart. Um, a friend of mine now in my family, Jeff Mason, um, he is an alumni from Stockton, and I think he's here right now actually, and um, him and his wife met hitchhiking, and he actually hitchhiked to Stockton with his rejection letter 
um, and they let him in. Um, and it was an amazing experience. He taught me so much and showed me that Stockton's community, although we've grown, we have still stuck to our core values and we are all still those same people. We are all still Ospreys. And I really loved working with him. And we did a piece recently, a podcast about COVID-19. And it was really, it went really well. Um, we've gotten a lot of views on it so far. And we, it is on the Stockton Facebook page and Twitter page. And we just talked about um, what it's like to be a senior right now during this time. And I'm just going to play a quick little clip from that podcast. It cannot be undervalued. Um, what's the major takeaway for your class out of this whole COVID-19 situation? One takeaway, if you had to put it in summarizing. Appreciating, appreciating the little things, the day-to-day the, the -day things that you would not pay attention to, like waving to someone on the way to get coffee or parking your car on campus. Like I would give anything to park my car on campus right now. And I used to hate it because I would drive around for an hour uh... looking for a spot. And now I would give anything to go back there and drive around looking for a parking spot. So, so that was just a little piece of um, what we did. We talked about a lot of other things, um, answered a lot of questions for him, and it was awesome. And this connection really taught me a lot. Um, this internship wasn't just about the writing. It was about the connections that I've made with Dr. Kinsella and all my fellow interns. Overall, I've made connections that will help me um, forever and have – shaped me to who I am. So just a big thank you from me to Dr. Kinsella for letting me be a part of this and to all of you for um, helping me out. And yeah. Okay. Jess, thank you for that. Uh, we're going to move on to our, our video intern, um, CJ Coyle. Thank you, Dr. Kinsella. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm CJ Coyle, and I am the videographer for Stockton's 50th anniversary strike team. Along with video production, I've conducted interviews, I've edited video, and I've reviewed hours of video footage that we have in the archives to be cut down into shorter snippets to really highlight uh, the best of different interviews and events over the years at Stockton. As Jess touched on before, I did make the art room video that displays the variety of work uh, made by students and the, the whole atmosphere of what it's like to be an art major at Stockton as well as other videos discussing the community garden, which was another incredible learning experience for me, uh, where Dr. Kinsella and I got to sit down with David Lockwood and talk about the history and the depth that has gone into making the garden what it is today. Um, also, the WLFR's 35th anniversary party highlight video. Uh, the 35th anniversary party was just this past winter, so I was able to make a, a highlight video on that event, which was very fun. I had plans to create a documentary, a larger documentary on WLFR and non-commercial radio as a whole, as well as orchestrate a weekly event, a week long event to share the experience of life at Stockton, what it's like to go to the school. It was tagged hashtag gosto or hashtag gosto by some. And uh, fortunately those plans were cut short due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but overall, this internship was a great learning experience for me over the past year, as I had done it for the, the past two semesters as well. And it's definitely going to be something that I will miss dearly when I graduate next month. So thank you to Dr. Kinsella and thanks to my fellow interns for a great two semesters. Thank you, CJ. Uh, we're going to move on to Lori Melchioni. Hi, everyone. Um, let me just share my screen. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yep. Looks okay. good. So um, like Professor Kinsella said, my name is Lori Melchoni. I am the assistant editor at the Argo, um, Stockton's independent uh, student newspaper. Um, so when I was coming up with ideas at the beginning of the semester for what I wanted to write about, I knew I wanted to do something that was related to the Argo, not just because it's something that's close to my heart, but something that really represents Stockton's history. Um, the Argo shares an anniversary with Stockton. Stockton started, um, st uh, the academic year started at the Galloway campus in 1971. And a month later, Dan McMahon founded the Argo in October. Um, that was when the first issue came out actually. Um, so that's when Professor Kinsella got me in touch with all the legends of the Argo. Uh, Dan McMahon, the first editor in chief, Tony Marino, he ran the faculty corner. That was the faculty uh, column in the Argo in the 70s. Um, Eric Summer, he was the first artist and logo designer of the Argo and Emily Harima. 
She was the editor in chief during the early 2000s. Um, so what made me um, lay the groundwork for what I wanted to write about on the Argo for this project was the fact that when I started out as an intern, um, it was when Trump was starting to get impeached. And I thought it was interesting that when the Argo started in the 70s, that was when Watergate happened. A year later in 1972, that's when the whole scandal happened with President Nixon and he was about to get impeached. Um, so I interviewed Dan McMahon in addition to all the interviews that I did with uh, Dan, Emily, Tony. Um, I did some archive work. This is what the um, page looks like where I put all the old issues that I went through. A lot of them are mentioned in my piece. Um, so this is what the Argo looks like today. Um, in addition to all the comparisons that I was able to draw on the, how the Argo looked like in the early 2000s, I thought it was interesting when I talked to Emily Harima because in her time at the Argo, there were a lot of social issues going on that were similar ones in the 70s when Dan McMahon was the editor in chief, but uh, different aspects of it were being written about. Um, so the Argo really reflects Stockton's history, especially because it's all written by student voices. Um, it, it captures, you know, politics, social issues, issues on campus. Um, that's some of the things you'll see in my piece. I'm still editing it now, but it's almost done. Um, this is what the Argo looks like today. Uh, right now it's completely digitized because of COVID-19. Um, so yeah, it was just really interesting to see how uh, the Argo's early legend shaped what it is today, how their work influences what I do at the Argo today. Um, it was a great opportunity being able to meet all these people and especially being able to meet everyone on the strike team. Um, so it was a lot of fun. And you here? Sure, a lot of fun. Uh -huh. Okay. All right, give me that screen back. Very good, that's good. Uh, Lori, thank you very much for that. We're gonna move on to another one of our freelance writers, Gabriella Fiorica. Hello, I'm Gabriella Fiorica. Um, this woman we met Go ahead. So I'm going to show you one of the first um, projects I actually worked on this semester. It is my first semester as an um, intern for Fifth and it was lo called Love Letters and Hate Mail to Stockton. And pretty much it is um, a compilation of articles throughout the years, whether positive or negative, that the Argo has presented. And it kind of goes chronologically, and you can see it's like displayed kind of like the columns in the Argo. And it actually began back in 2018, actually, with this last entry right here, Thank You to Stockton, by um, senior Sarah Brown, who wrote this Thank You to Stockton, you know, thanking it for being this great um, college where she was able to make all these friends, join clubs, um, provide her with amazing professors that um, really changed her life. And it was that that kind of gave um, the 50th the idea of doing this project because the Argo has kind of been this voice for Stockton for almost 50 years, you know, as long as the college almost. And it's been a place for Stockton to really voice their opinion. And you can see they write about the, stu um, the theater, parking, you know, big and small politics. Right here you can see Republicans and the Save Club, which is an environmental club. And it was really great because I got to use the Argo, the online Argo um, provided by the archives to kind of do this project and see the progression. So that was really neat. Um, another great thing was I got to work on something called, The Lampos Graveyard, which I got to work with my fellow um, writers, Jess and Lori. And it was pretty much about these um, lampposts that are in the woods in front of Stockton, um, in front of parking lot one across from the road. And whenever Stockton um, tore down a parking lot to build more buildings, they kind of dispose of the lampposts here. So the three of us kind of went on this little adventure in the woods um, trying to find these lampposts. And you can see right here, they're kind of like, all together in the back. And it's really cool because um, they were from different ages, different times. Some of the lamps looked really different than each other. 
And it was really fun um, because I was like how the 50th allows us to kind of work together and the lab collaborate together. And so just writing pieces by myself, we kind of got to work together, learn from each other. And I thought that was a really awesome part of this whole experience. And I look forward to working more in the future. Okay. And we were, we're going to have our last intern, our archivist intern, Sophia Lopresti, go next. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, my name is Sophia Lopresti. I am a senior history major and the archival research intern for the strike team. Um, I spent two semesters working in Stockton Special Collections and Archives, um, which, if, for those who don't know, is located in the lower level of Stockton's library um, on the Galloway campus. Uh, when you walk into the library and head downstairs, you'll find where we house our university archives and you'll find Heather Perez, who's here today. Shout out, love you. Uh, the special collections librarian and university archivist, um, an intern such as myself who collects and preserve uh, local history as well as American history. Um, a big portion of my responsibilities as the archival research intern was to collect, organize, um, and digitize photographs from scrapbooks, uh, photo albums, or physical collections in the Stockton Library for preservation, for future Stockton projects, or to be uploaded um, to our Stockton story site. So our photo gallery is to give a glimpse of what Stockton was like uh, and how Stockton has changed throughout the years. Um, so next, um, one of the projects I worked on was digitiz digitizing photo albums from the physical plant. Uh, here are some photographs. Um, so it's basically to give a glimpse of what life was like in the 80s at the physical plant. Um, something else I worked on was the construction of the campus center. Um, these are donated images from Louise in the archives. Uh, Tom called this project uh, the day the trees came down because the campus center was built on about seven acres of forest uh, that students and faculty and the Stockton community in general had to walk through to get from their cars to the academic building. Uh, the removal of the trees is a, was a huge social, ch social change to the school's community, but while also it also accepted the future of the school. Um, I am also writing a narrative piece on the day the trees came down uh, to illustrate the event and examine its significance. Uh, next, uh, I am writing a piece on working, how, working on how Greek life at Stockton benefits the school in, in the South Jersey community. Um, Tom inspired me to write this piece as a sort of inside look at my experience in Stockton Greek life. So every member of Greek life at Stockton uh, raises funds and awareness for numerous national, organization, national organizations, such as St. Jude's Children Hospital, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, um, and we also spent half our time donating to local organizations, such as the Atlantic City Rescue Mission, um, and such as my sorority, Delta Phi Epsilon. We sometimes partner with the Wellness Center for, for um, their National Eating Disorder Awareness Week in the spring. So uh, yeah, this, this internship provided me with so many opportunities to grow as a writer and grow as a researcher in the archives, which is something that I hold near and dear to my heart. And I'm really excited to continue uh, at grad school in the fall. So yeah, thank you. So thank you, Sophia. It, it's now my uh turn to say a few words and then to open this up for questions if anybody in the crowd does have questions you can just unmute mute and ask away or you can start to type in the chat and we'll try to read these things um a few of these um interns have been very polite and formal tonight calling me dr kinsella or professor sophia has gotten a lot closer to the relationship that we've had which is Hi, Tom. He said, Tom, that was still formal. It's quite often, hey, or hey, hey. you. Um, it, this is, this is, Ken alluded to the following idea. Ken or I would think up ideas for the 50th anniversary interns, and I would be tasked with delivering this idea, and I would 
deliver it in some excited manner and say, this is a really good idea. You guys listen to us and let's get going. And they'd listen. And then they'd come back in about two days and they'd say, you know, you said the idea that you said, but if you think about it, Tom, because we have been, we could do it another way. And then they describe some way which invariably was a better way. It, so much so that I, I got used to counting on that. I say, okay, well, here's an idea, but bring something back to me that's better. Uh, CJ is mentioning the um, GOSTO or GASTO event that we were going to have. This is actually, Ken Tompkins started this idea where we wanted to have people with their phones photographing Stockton for a day, and then we'd put it all together as a capturing of, of a slice of a day of Stockton. The strike team really worked up the idea. We had it all set to go into social media and have lots of different people hopefully contribute to this community event. Uh, and, and then we washed out because there is no on-campus site and we decided, or visiting, and we decided we better not ask people to come on the campus and take pictures. Um, the interns have done a great job. Some of them worked for two semesters for me, some just one, some will work for me next semester. I've got a new suite of interns coming in, Ken and I both do. Next semester we'll do this again and then we'll, I think, stop the project. I won't say complete it in the spring of, of 71. That's um, certainly when we're slated to to end this. We have been trying to gather lots of material. I have consistently said to the strike team, let's be collecting for a hundred years. I don't want someone to say, Kinsella's dead now, but boy, he didn't do a good enough job. You guys didn't collect enough material for it the 50th. I want people to look back and think they had a nice start on, on collecting and enhancing Stockton archives. Um, the stories are sometimes thrilling. I think they're always very good, wonderful. If you haven't gone to the Stockton EDU slash story site, um, there's a lot of material there. There'll be a lot more. We've got quite a bit in the pipeline that is yet to be published. Um, Ken said to me a few weeks back, you know, there's too much and, and maybe we shouldn't stop this. Maybe we should do this forever. Well, we're not going to come continue to do Stockton stories in the way we've done it for more than two semesters, but we could certainly use help. And I'm looking at the various people here. You all know Stockton and you know pieces of Stockton, whether you're there now, whether you were there 50 years ago. <laughs> if, if you want to help us and, and write up little pieces or help us research and write up little pieces, we'd love to have the help. You just have to write Ken Tompkins or write Tom Kinsella and we can, um, try to bring your ideas um, to the top of the story as well. That's the end of the formal portion of this. Um, I'm looking at some of the um, chat over here. I wonder if anyone, anyone in particular wants to just unmute, jump in and start to ask a question of the interns. <laughs> I just, didn't want to ask a question. I just wanted to say thanks for having me. Uh, I graduated in 85, so it's, it's been a long time. And now I'm down here in Florida. You can see the palm trees blowing in the Beautiful. wind. But I think they all gave a great talk, and I miss being up there. I wanted to get up there. We did have a, a reunion planned next month for, I guess, the years 82 through 85 because we were over in the courts. Are they still there? Are the courts? The courts are still there. They've been refurbished a bit. Yeah, they are. The yeah, additional but... material. Uh, there's additional dormitories over there. Is Stockton, if you haven't been to Stockton in 10 years or 15 years, you it's won't change a lot. Oh. Yeah, I'm sure. But it's and, uh, we were actually going to stay in the courts. That's where we were staying for this reunion, but it got canceled because of the COVID-19. But They've got it scheduled for next year, same time, in May. So hopefully I'll be up there at that time. So thanks for having me. Thank you, Richard. Hi, my name is Sharon Sullivan. I was Sharon Helfgott when I went to Stockton. I graduated in 1980. I partook in a lot of different activities. 
I was the head of the Tenants Association, and I think you still have Challenge of the Courts or Spring Challenge? Uh, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And, um, but I took part, to, I, the Washington Center for Learning Alternatives, I did that in D.C. Okay. T currently a council person, but what I wanted to say is, Stockton, the friends that you meet at Stockton are friends forever. And it was the professors and the students were remarkable people. And they really made my foundation of my life. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Ronnie DeGeno. Um, I was Ronnie Beer when I went to Stockton and uh, graduated 2010 now. So I was a part of the honors program and they put together the Myths and Legends. I was wondering how much that helped uh, or whether um, it had any part to do with the research for the 50th anniversary. Ronnie, um, that's a good question. One of the, I, I'm not sure whether Tony Marino was a myth or a legend, um, but one of the <laughs> people that often it talks at myths and legends is is here john c right you probably talked too there's others um yes yes i uh, have <laughs> myth and legends are uh, i've sort of been brought up at ken tompkins knee um and he he has talked about early stock and he was the first he studies he remembers the old days and so i've got the, the myth and legend story are part of my knowledge database of Stockton and, and certainly uh, the um, interns and I spent a lot of time just rehashing some of that history. Um, the, at least several of the tapes of, of myth and legends are down in the archives. So we do have these things recorded and, um, uh, and they're quite fun stories to hear over and over again. Hi, this is uh, Henry Glickel um, from uh, class of 1985. Um, I think it, it may it may be um, I don't know um, it may behoove us to um, identify uh, certain um, alumni who have achieved certain accomplishments and um, in their uh, livelihoods, and maybe make that a piece also. Um, mm -hmm. There's three or four individuals that come to mind you know, who've, who've gone on to great things that don't necessarily many people know about. Like our president of, our, of the university. <laughs> yeah. For one example. Yes, it's true. Yep, um, absolutely. It, it, that's a great idea, Henry. Um, this, uh, on a slightly different note, Gabriella has been working on a um, famous people who visited, scholars, musicians, um, cultural mm -hmm. um, folk. Um, and we'll put out a list in the next few weeks with a, a little bit of a teaser of the sorts of folks that, that we know of. Mm -hmm. but we understand that's an incomplete list and, and would love to have help if people can remember from 85 or 78, oh, mm -hmm. you forgot this person. And you know, we go into the Argo and start mm -hmm. to look up this material. The mm -hmm. famous alums would be lovely too. Sarah Farad is probably sort of thinking that one through. She's, she was here earlier, um, mm -hmm. who is our Director of um, Alumni Services, um, Alumni Relations. Um, yes. Hi, it's Maddie Dininger, and I wasn't going to say anything, but you'll definitely have to talk to uh, Ray Ciccone, one of my fellow Board of Trustees members. Right was there in the early years. I'm not sure if you have yet, but he's got great stories early on when some um, amazing Patty Smith came. He's got a very funny I think, Billy Joel story. Um, and I want to give a special, it's so nice to see all of you, but I have to give a special shout out to Fred Mensch. It's wonderful seeing, I love your background, but Stockton was such an important part of my early life and continues to be. And I really appreciate being able to hear what the strike team has been up to and the wonderful leaders of the strike team. So thank you so much for including me in this. 
Maddie, thanks for that. Um, I reached out to Ray right uh, probably the first semester, five semesters ago, and, and um, we haven't gotten back in touch, but I will reach out to him again. Um, this comes under the rubric again of there's too much to do. Stockton yeah. has got yeah. a rich, lovely history. Um, so if, again, if someone wants to write up their own little piece and send it to us, at the very least, it's going to go into the archives. And um, I, let's argue the best case scenario goes on the Stockman Story site. We'd love to do it. Tom, I'll also remind Ray, and we also have Nalita Valentin, who has a wonderful backstory of um, what an important place Stockton was for her. She came in as an EOF student. So I'll, I'll encourage everyone. That, that's great. Uh, just, just leapfrogging off of that, for oh. bit, one of the things that we talk about quite a bit on the strike team is the Stockton community and how Stockton fosters community. We, you know, mm -hmm. maybe other colleges do as good a job, but I don't know that I'm, any college does a better job than Stockton does. Um, and a lot of the stories really, whether they stayed or not, are rotating around the <coughs> community. Um. I have one question for one of the interns, uh, C.J. Coyle. Uh, are, are you related to Charlie Coyle? Um, unmute, unmute, C.J. Oh, sorry. Hello. Pardon? Yes. Um, I do no. have a lot of relatives that I'm not close with so i definitely might be related to a charlie coil but not that i know personally okay i'm sorry all right that. thank you for the that's question. fine yeah. uh it's very good to see paul rimley yeah i uh, paul rimley i have not seen in many many years Where is paul? hey uh, good night uh, good evening everyone hey paul oh How's my everybody? god <laughs> so, uh, Paul Rimley, class of 80, um, and I actually worked at Stockton and Campus Activities to probably help out some folks with some stories about entertainment, et cetera, that we booked over probably four years after I graduated. Um, while I'm here quickly, I'd like to give a shout out to Joe Shepard, a good friend of mine and classmate who's on the night, who was also one of the bartenders at the Sea Wing Pub. And, uh, Barbara, <laughs> and, and Barbara Reynolds, who's on, who ran Free to Be, where both of my children um, went to preschool. And uh, lots of love, Barb. I'm taking notes. Fred Bench. Wonderful to see Fred Bench. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, this is uh, this is Keenan Maven. Uh, actually, I actually had a question. Please. Um, I, I didn't I didn't go to Stockton. I lived, I guess, a little too close. Uh, my my godfather worked there for many years. Uh, Melvin Gregory. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I we I, love Mel. <laughs> he's great. But I always just love the sense of community. Um, I went to Stockton <laughs> Day Camp for many years, and I heard that it's 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 not quite what it used to be. But I was wondering if there was any stories about Stockton Day Camp. I just remember, like, looking back at the experience I had at Stockton Day Camp, just kind of really prepared me for college. And one story in particular, I remember meeting the uh, the women's national basketball team, um, and I think I still have like their signatures from my Stockton Day Camp book. Um, so I, I was wondering if there was any stories or anything being done. I, I love to help, but I, I know the Stockton Day Camp was was really quite amazing. And I don't think I've seen anything like that at, at any other universities that I can remember. Keenan, we haven't uh, done anything on the day camp yet, uh, but this is the sort of thing that I'd love to have you write to me and, and we can start the ball rolling. You know other people, other people um, that are here or uh, on campus would have other names. Um, we have to have ideas and then we, we um, try to collect information. Again, not everything that we have attempted to do has ended up on the Stockton Story site, but everything that we've gathered has gone down into the Stockton archives. And while I, I can't guarantee, I trust that in 10 or 15 or 20 years, that material is gonna be really important to someone or to some group of people. Uh -huh. um, and so we really do try 
um, to follow up on all of the different leads that we have. To answer your, Keenan, uh, sorry, to answer your question, Keenan, uh, we do have a few dozen photos in um, our collective Google Drive for Stockton Stories. Um, so we do have material already, but we would definitely welcome like further insight to your experiences with Stockton and the community. Yeah, no, I mean, I think especially being from South Jersey, just the experiences that, that we have and the accessibility, I thought that day camp was just immensely valuable looking back at it. At the time, I was kind of a terror, but um, it, it was a really great experience that really helped prepare me for college. If you are looking to follow up on summer camp, one of the people to try to find is if Vera, Vera's son, King, is still around anywhere. He was in the, the summer school on a regular basis for a number of years. That's an interesting idea, Fred. And he was a counselor at one point. Oh, well, I know him when he was still just a commoner before he got to be a counselor. So you're obviously a whole lot younger. <laughs> Hi there. I'm Barbara Reynolds, class of 1977. And um, you make, well, I was thinking before you spoke about the possibility of doing something about free to be the child care center at Stockton. It's got an interesting history and it's still, it's thriving. It's in wonderful shape today. I retired <laughs> maybe nine or 10 years ago from but I graduated Stockton in 77, traveled for a year and a half, came back, and I worked there my entire life. <laughs> Got a Jero minor. What's Paul? How was it? Barb, Barb the, um, a, a, a story or, or, or stories about free to be is exactly the sort of thing we'd love to have. Um, again, anybody want to reach out to me, it's at thomas.kinsella at stockton.edu. I'm easy to find. Um, I have lots of photos that, well, go, way, that go way back. <laughs> and this is the sort of thing that Heather Perez in the archives is looking for. There's photographs and documents, and if we form that up into a story, so be it. But if all we've got are those materials, that's a great start, it seems to me. Oh, preserving things. would love to get it to you. And then right. I also graduated in 77. So I was at Stockton. They were interesting days back then. You know, <laughs> to tell about that. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Ken, have you thought up that story yet, whichever one you were going to tell us? No, I don't have one, but. I was going to comment on the day, the day um, um, camp. Uh, Stockton ran it for many, many years. Uh, my children went there um, when when Stockton was in charge of it, and then they um, used a professional, uh, and I don't know the name of it, a professional group who came in and did the camp, and I think they still are doing it. Um, but um, my children, as I said, they went there when and they, they still remember stories. I see them and talk with them about it every once in a while. They still remember stories of going to the camp and all the things that they did. So I'm having a day camp flashback. I could share if you'd like. <laughs> so in the old days, the foundation would have its benefit around the swimming pool. And after that, they would have to empty the swimming pool just in case any glassware got spilled. But there was one year where there was the day camp and we had an elder hostel program with older adults also using the pool. Unfortunately, someone had an accident in the pool. It was a floater. And the children <laughs> accused the older adults and the older adults accused the children, but nevertheless, the pool had to be emptied for, for health purposes. <laughs> I could probably find the date on that. It was humorous and yet sad. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that in Caddyshack? Yeah, it probably was as well. Yeah, but it happened at Stockton. <laughs> yeah. I, um, 
love our art gallery, but I deeply mm -hmm. miss our pool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we could keep going for a long time, but let's not. Um, this will be, re this has been recorded and it will be online. You can find Ken Tompkins email address or my own um, on the Stockton website easily enough. Love to hear from you. I will, let me, let me conclude at least my portion by telling you a Stockton story we have not yet managed to do. And we've been thinking about this one for three or four semesters. Um, there was a, um, a moment when I thought to myself, we should be recording what's going on in those smoking gazebos. I'm quite confident that smoking will eventually get outlawed and stocked. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so we should record this moment in history. And I was saying that to an earlier strike team member and she looked at me and said, do you know about gazebos? And I, I don't hear, I got two hearing aids in my head. I don't hear quite right. And I said, what? She goes, well, my freshman year, I hung out in the gazebo, and there was five or six people that are always there with me. I wasn't even a smoker, but I did. And they become they became my gazebros. And when I see them on campus four four years later, we nod, we talk, we're we're still gazebros. And I looked at her, and she said, "And each one of the gazebos has a different community in it." We've been trying to track down that story. Um, yeah. One of the problems that we've had is when we go up to the gazebo and say, hey, we want to do a Stockton history piece on you, people start to clam up and say, well, you're not going to do it here. You're <laughs> with us. We meant really to get that. CJ and Jess and I were going to go out. I was going to dress as, as enticingly as I could so that people would trust me. Um, but then the coronavirus got in the way. So that that will have to wait for the fall, I suppose. There are many little areas of Stockton that I don't know that we've even calculated to make into community places and spaces, but they have happened and they're wonderful. And I'm thankful for it. Anybody else? Otherwise, uh, keep keep checking on Stockton Story site. It keeps going. It, it it's will good to see good. all of you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks. 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 thanks, everyone. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you for doing thank it. Man. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Tony. Thanks for showing up. Bye. Tony hasn't said anything. Say hello to Mary, Fred. we will do. Hey, Fred. Hey, Fred. Yes. Fred, don't hop yes. off yet. Uh, I wanted to say something to you. Um, I remember you taught, uh, I think it was uh, ancient Greece, and you taught at the time with my girlfriend, you taught one of the toughest classes at Stockton. Um, it was the only one she ever got a B in, and it <laughs> devastated her. Hey, she took it in the summer even. Oh, God, her name was, uh, oh, I forget You don't her remember her name? <laughs> no, 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 I don't know her. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to think of her name. Her name was Samantha Homestock, Homestead. Homestock, um, but I don't know what her new maiden name, uh, maiden, uh, married name is. I know she lives in Morristown. So I just remember that. So, uh, well, I, I will pay for that over the remaining years that I have left in my life, and I will grieve over it. You know, I'll survive. All right. Thanks. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly let her know when I text her on uh, Facebook or whatever. Okay. So, Deanna, nice to see us. Nice to see everybody. Take care. Here we go. Nice work. Thank you.